Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jack. Back again to bring you Mythic Mother from a healer perspective. Everything that you need to know about mastering and conquering this fight. All right, starting off playing Discipline uh, because we had another Holy Priest with us. So I preferred to Disc and Holy rather than Double uh, double Holy. Uh, for the start of this fight, I ended up ramping up at seven seconds before the pull actually went off because we sent an entire group of five players to be able to get over um, to the side immediately to be able to interrupt the ads and to be able to start killing them rapidly. So what I did is I actually hit Rapture around eight or nine seconds and started ramping up immediately afterwards, applying shields to all of the first five members of the group because we sent them based off group one, group two, group three, etc. So what I did is I shielded up the entirety of the group and I made sure that I actually had atonement on just about everybody um, before the actual start of the, or before they actually went over, then immediately started dumping damage into the boss to be able to get an extremely large ramp up here. If you pair that and have available innervates, you could use that on before the pull and start with nearly full mana and be able to get another innervate cast on later on in the fight. I think it's a little difficult to make perfect use of innervate here because of how quickly the fight can go. So you using it even before the pull or even really early on into the fight can save you some mana early on and then be able to use it later. But as you're seeing, we sent more than half of our group uh, through the portal in the first minute of the fight. And the CDs that we used, a lot of times we try to lean on uh, cooldowns like Devotion Aura or any raid-wide CDs along the lines of Tranquility, Divine Hymn, that will actually go and hit your side and the other side as long as you're within range of the players. So big raid cooldowns like that are a huge help for the rest of the group. And we saved really heavy cooldowns. Initially, we looked at using Barrier at the start, but we found if I had a proper ramp and I took my time with it and prepared uh, well for it, it wasn't absolutely needed. So we decided to use Barrier a little bit later on for the next big uh, run through. So the way that we ended up doing this is ended up having at the start of every new uh, window here, we would send a very large group through once everybody got quite a bit of DPS uptime. So as you're seeing here, once we actually are finishing up these beams, you start ramping up as best as you can before the next big group goes. And we ended up using Spirit Link Totem, even dropping Ankh Totem in case somebody died, because a lot of times people would just be taking very heavy damage here. And it's also kind of a difficult time to be able to ramp up here. I was trying my, my best to be able to get Atomen out on everybody to be able to top them off. So I was able to get a lot of healing done, but the timing of it was less than perfect because of how much other things were going on, how difficult it can be to run it away from the lasers, have the proper positioning, continue applying atonements, be able to plant your feet, get the double powered radiance cast off. So keeping in mind the positional requirements and the damage that can go out there is always very important to deal with here. But also looking at things like two minute tranks uh, to be able to continue having extra cooldowns as you go from the second room onto the third room, right? It, this fight isn't too mechanically heavy, but I think it's much more about planning for the healers to be able to know when they're going to be using those larger cooldowns to be able to keep everybody alive. And for keeping people in range, a lot of times I ended up sticking very close to the tank and even actually standing very close to the other side of the portal here, to the little um, laser field that you'd have to end up crossing through because you could cast your powered radiance and hit players on the other side. You could be able to use it for things like Halo as well to be able to get uh, range on those other players here. So whenever possible, it felt good. Uh, some of the things that were not on the great side for disc, not being in range of a target that's going to be living for a long time. The ads do need quite a bit of damage, but once players are actually doing their jobs properly, they should melt extremely quickly. So not being in range of the, uh, the boss for small periods of time was a pain, but it, in many cases we found it was better for another uh, healer, mainly like a paladin, to stay in range of the tank until the very end uh, to be able to provide larger spot healing to the tank, rather than a disc priest who may not be as well suited for that type of task. So, Looking at how we plan that out, um, you could also opt to have the tank go a little bit earlier, so that way you can have you know groups two, one, and two be able to continue DPSing, and then you have you know small downtime for group four, something along those lines is definitely possible. Uh, so any chance, if it's possible to have your disc priest stay with the tank, it can provide a lot of extra healing to the rest of the group. But the spot healing, in if the tank is taking tons of damage, they're not going to be the best ones to be able to sustain them for a, you know, a consistent period of time. If you're having 20, 30 seconds of the Disc Priest being the only healer, it can be a little bit more of a pain rather than having uh, maybe a Paladin, like I said. That's what we ended up opting to do. 
So it's always important to you know look at what your healers are going to be most well suited for. And once you enter into this final phase, all of the healers should be DPSing, and at that point, all of your raid cooldowns should either be coming off cooldown or should should always be on cooldown because of uh, how much damage goes out before then. And once you're onto this boss and get into the final room, it's just a straight up burn. So planning out your cooldowns in advance using uh, raid wide auras very early on, like devotion aura, to be able to start reducing the damage there, saving big cooldowns maybe like spirit link totem to be able to uh, watch out for the very big crossovers that you're going to be doing depending on how you actually do the strategy i would recommend having a larger group sent away uh, early on to be able to kill the ads provides consistent interrupts and the healers continuously uh, rotating through cooldowns not to top everybody off with the cooldown but to get everybody at a healthy enough level that they're not going to die to any little extra damage here make sure that you're in a position to be able to keep them healthy enough to survive and then let the regular ticking healing be able to slowly bring them back up to an HP, right? So very early on, we used a couple, only a couple CVs like Disciplined Ramp, uh, as well as uh, Druid Trank and Devotion Aura as we sent very large groups in the first minute of the fight. And then we started taking time and sending groups of two or three after that. Hope you all enjoyed this quick video as to on Mythic Mother and all the things that you need to know to be able to kill it. If you have any questions about my UI, uh, other things that we did on Into the Fight, be sure to check the description below. Uh, as we also have some more written boss guides coming out in greater detail, uh, as you can see on my guides on Wowhead. So thank you for tuning in, guys. Hope you all enjoyed it. I'll catch you all next time.